Yes. So. That's that one's a surprise today, though. Oh yeah. It's a surprise, just like you did the other day. That's what it's happens still with me. A surprise. I'm, I'm just always surprised. You are a surprising individual. You are. <laughs> what do they got going up here? Still no sound. No How sound. About How about now? It's picking it up now. Hmm. Well, I can hear us. Yeah. Oh, will you turn the light on. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know one way to get people not to complain about how bad it sounds? Yeah, don't listen to them. Yeah, just don't have sound at all. <laughs> yeah. Just don't yeah, have sound hey, at all. This is not bad sound. It's just not non-existent. Yeah. But Look at this new rug we got on the table. Oh, pretty. I wonder what happened to the other one. I know what happened to the other uh, one. Boy, I don't. It disappeared. Yeah, this one Somebody is super fun. Liz told me I couldn't sell it. <clears throat> And he took that as a I, I took it as a challenge, but it turns out it wasn't a challenge. I was just not supposed to sell it. It was an order, a <laughs> direct order. It was an order, <laughs> not a, not a challenge. So, <laughs> whoops. So we now now we have uh, champagne on the yeah. table. This is a pretty hide, though. I it like, really, it I think really I is. I like this one every bit as much as the other one. So I, I guess I'll let Liz at least get to see this one on the table a few times before yeah. I sell it. Yeah, this one's got some fuzz to it. It's nice. a nice looking one. Well, let's look at camera four and see what we did last time with the Angelus paint, where we ended up after the antiquing. So this is just all the Angelus dye with no paint on it, yes. but antiqued. And this one's with Angelus dye on the flowers, and the flower uh, fades in the centers, and then I, Angelus, painted the rest of it. Yeah, and you did a fine job, I might add. That looks beautiful. I thought it turned out good, and your antiquing of it covered up some of the other painting that well, I kind of miss some spots here and there. That's the whole purpose of it. Yeah. So now we're going to do Let's Denny's do favorite method. I don't know if this is my favorite. Denny's hidden method that nobody knows about. Oh, everybody knows about All this. right. Everybody, this is Denny's method that it, everybody knows about. Again, for another time on a video. I have to, I have to say... I have never done anything original. Everything I've done is I've plagiarized off of someone else. I copied? Think. Well, not copied. But Isn't that what plagiarize is? I get, yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you have stole from other people? I've stolen ideas from everyone else. <laughs> so you guys uh, that have ideas, I, I envy you and I appreciate it. So we got some Masters Quick Shine. Mm -hmm. We have the trusty old Feebing's Dye Reducer again. We got some B Natural RTC Shared and Resist. I wonder if you can use this on not Sheridan. Yeah, you could probably use that on Milwaukee stuff too. Yeah, if you do, <laughs> if you do other things like Hawaiian flowers, will it turn it into Sheridan flowers? Yeah, yeah. It, it will. Yeah, uh, some turquoise. Angelus. Angelus acrylic, acrylic paint. Some dark chocolate pro dye. Uh, some applicating devices, and a foam. Spill, spill reducer. Spill reducer. <laughs> and, and then... Uh, two delightful cups. Some daubers and some... Uh, what? Pipettes. Pipettes. Is that what those are? I think that's the <laughs> okay. actual name All right. of it. Okay. Oh, before we go, I've got to, I've got oh. to say, we had a couple of visitors yesterday from Grable, Wyoming. That's a long way from here. And that's up in the northern part of Wyoming, kind of the north central part, if I remember right. But uh, Chris Morency and her husband, and I forgive me, Chris's husband. I for, I don't think I even ever heard your name, but uh, you and I had a nice conversation. He's a taxidermist, and he was. They were both telling me. He's got some antelope mounts in the Smithsonian Institute, which I, is... Yeah, he told me about that the last time. Which is cool. And he also, I don't know if they're still there, but he had some uh, lion mounts, I think, in uh, the Wonders Wildlife Museum here in Springfield. But uh, Anyway, had a nice visit with them, and she brought me a trading card, which is a Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep, which is... Say, which is turn our phantom power on. All right, here you go. All right, yeah. 
this is beautiful. She she did a beautiful job, and she teaches some classes, some tooling classes up there in Grable, Wyoming. <clears throat> but anyway, I just had to give her a plug because she was here and we had a nice conversation. She brought me a round knife she wanted me to sharpen, and I'm sorry I couldn't do her any good because we didn't have much to work with. But uh, anyway, back to business here. I guess where we'll start is I'm going to use my pipette and put some of this chocolate, dark chocolate pro dye in a little cup. Her knife was too far gone? Well, no, there just wasn't much of a knife there. I gotcha. It was kind of more like a club than a knife. Uh. And it was a round knife and I don't know, some people might have been able to use that but I could never get it where I could use it so we called it off. <clears throat> okay, first thing I'm going to do is try and dye this background without splotching it everywhere else. And <clears throat> this is one reason this is really not my favorite thing to do, but I love to do it. But it's dangerous. You've got to be careful. You can get dye in a spot you don't want to, and once it's there, it's there. Dying the background like this, you want to load your brush and start in the middle of one of the areas that you're going to do, and not right up against the edge. We've, we've talked about this over and over again, but I think it's worth talking about over and over. Because if you don't do that, you will, there's a chance you'll be sorry at some point. Am I okay there? Am I in my own way? Nope, you're doing good. But if you get in a real small area, don't load your brush up with too much dye. And if nothing else, uh, kind of get some of the dye off on a paper towel or a piece of scrap leather or something. So. Because if you've got a big old drip of dye right at the end of your brush, boy, it's just going to leach everywhere. But the reason I think this is so scary is if you worked on a project, sweated over it, tooled over it, and finally got all your tooling done really nice, then you go up and drop a big old glop of dye right in the middle of one of these spots. It doesn't make you happy. I guess uh, our crew got back from Tucson. I saw Kevin this morning. Said they they ended up with eight pallets of rocks. Hmm. He said one of them is a surprise pallet because he really doesn't know what's going to be on it. helps if you've got a pretty good brush to do this with too because if you got one that the bristles are all helter skelter and sticking out and they're going to die something you don't want died
I think there's no sound. We're just not talking. <laughs> that constitutes no sound. When you're doing stuff like this, you kind of got to keep your mind on your business. And I'm over here clicking buttons. I was wondering what you were doing. Are you just doing that because you want to click some buttons? Yeah. Not really. Just about got it died here. Looking for a button I can't find. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call that good. Get rid of this cup of dye here. And put a little bit of dye reducer in this cup to clean my brush with. It doesn't take very much. see the cup? No, I said when I switched over all I could see was the cup. Oh. It's a styrofoam cup. <laughs> Duh. Okay, next. Let's dye or let's paint the center of this little dude. And I'm gonna use the turquoise just like you used the other day on the other yeah. flowers. I think turquoise makes a pretty bright flower center. But I'm not going to be as meticulous as you were. I'm just going to paint the whole thing rather than try and dot each. And it doesn't take much to paint a flower center. That's the name of that tune. There you have it. There you have it. Now, if this was dry, I would put a coat of resist on it. Nice, even coat, make sure I get everything resisted. And then after that was dry, I would put some antique on it, which I did not bring with me, Tony. What do you need? Some antique. What color would you like? Uh, if I've got dark brown paste over there, I think that would be nice on this. <clears throat> All right. And what I was going to tell you guys was if and when I would have uh, put the resist on this and let it dry completely. But since we don't have time to let it dry completely, we discovered that in the first video we did in this series. Uh, what I did was I did a sample yesterday and I've already put the resist on it. I've dyed the, the background and painted the center and put the resist on. So it's ready to put the uh, antique on. But uh, I think this will be pretty. I really like what 
Tony did yesterday with the paint. He did a really pretty job. And he <coughs> he kind of blended some different paint and you know made the part of the green darker than the other part. It looked really nice. We did have, huh? I got some dark brown. All right. Let me get some paper towels. Uh, you need some gloves too? Uh, sure. If we have some. some in here somewhere. Liz got us this handy dandy box over here. Nice. But I have bad news when she gets here about it. What? Pieces that were of it were broken when I opened the box from. Oh and boy. I don't know what happened to Facebook. It didn't want to stream this morning. So sorry for those people that tried to get on on Facebook. Okay. Right. Zoom in, Tony. All right. We'll see how we'll see how zoom that in. I'm going to put a couple of paper towels down on top of this stone. I see you cleaned the rock off after you dabbed my paint it all it. over it. All right, this is just uh, Angelus Antique Paste in dark brown. I'm just going to dig some of it out here. Let's see, Urban said I have a lot of problems with bleeding dye. I don't know what to do doing wrong. Any tips? Well, that's, that's what we were talking about. Okay. When you want to start in the, in the middle of an area that you're going to dye, not on one edge. And you don't want to overload your brush. If you've got too much dye, it's got to go somewhere. And after it, after it saturates the one area that you're painting, it's going to go somewhere else. So the deal is, start, don't put too much dye on your brush. If you get too much on, daub it off on a paper towel or a piece of scrap leather. And go to the middle of the area you're dying, not the edge. Look at that. Look how zoomed in we are now. Oh, we are zoomed. <laughs> I'm going to get the edge of this good too. And I used uh, that Sheridan RTC resist on this. I'm really liking the way that's working out. Yeah, I'm not sure yep. what Dean was wanting me to zoom in on. Throw this away before I get it on everything else. Okay. Now you really don't need to let this set for any length of time because it's not going to... The idea for on, on antique is that it doesn't penetrate the, the surface of the leather. It just gets down in all of your cuts and uh, tool impressions. And with, with the resist on it, it... Oh, everybody wanted to see dye in the background. Oh. You mean as far as zooming in? Yeah. Too late. Yeah. I can show you what it looks like afterwards. Oh, I touched the flower center. Oh, you did. Way to go. Now it's got a finger mark on it. wipe your finger off or are you good? I'm good. So when you were doing this and you were putting your your dyeing on, you were touching kind of in the middle and then working your way to the outside of the backgrounding as it leaves? Yeah, I'll get the, the brush here and I'll show you. Okay. As soon as I clean myself up a little bit. Yeah, I thought you were getting kind of dirty. <laughs> First, let me, let me finish what I'm doing here. Okay. I'm going to take this dauber since I don't have a piece of wool skin with me. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's little puddles down in all these thumbprint marks. I'm just going to go over those lightly and just wipe those puddles out. Are you going to paper towel it again? Then I'm going to paper towel it one more time until there's not streaks on it. And we're going to call that good. But I'm not, you don't want to scrub around and try and get the antique out of all your impressions because you're trying to leave it in the impressions but to take it off of the, the highlights. But that looks pretty darn good, I think. I think so too. I think. 
I've okay. been using rubbing alcohol to clean up brushes. Is that kosher? I would say if it cleans them, it's great. There you go. You know, that's, I mean, what else can I say? <laughs> Whatever it takes. Okay, we're going to look at, we're going to look at this. Okay. You want to dye it a little bit darker again? Yeah, let me just, let me just go with some more dye. We'll start over. Sorry, I'm trying to take care of some other things on my on my computer. While well, also trying to do the live video and I wasn't reading any of the chat. So sorry. Alright, now I'm gonna use a different brush since I've got water on that other one. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load you my brush here. Over. You gotta do it up here. Okay. Now I've loaded my brush here, but I'm gonna this first stroke, I'm going to kind of twist my brush on a paper towel. So we just put a point on it. Yeah, and we dabbed it off there and made a point. Yeah. Now I'm going to take it, and if if you've got a if you've got a big glop of dye on the end of this brush, just take and and dab it off a little bit on your uh, paper towel. But I'm going to start. I'm not going to start at the edge. I'm going to start right in the middle of this. And if, when you do that, it, the dye is just going to spread out, especially if you've got very much on there. But if you go right to the center and let it spread out, you'll have a big wet spot right there, but just kind of spread that out from edge to edge. But if you get a big glop of dye on your brush, I'm going to get into a big area Hang on, let me, let me maybe. zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to put it in this area here. It's pretty big, but I'm going to get a big glop of dye on there. Maybe you can see what it does. But did, yeah, you can see you it can run see away. It, it just runs away from you, yeah. But after, but after you get that big bunch of dye off your brush, then you can go to your edges. But just kind of work your way out towards them. And if you're going to antique this, you know, in these little corners, you don't necessarily have to to get right in the corner because your your antique's going to take care of a little bit of that. Did you tape these up whenever you tooled them? Tape them? Yeah, did you tape no, the back of them? No, I should have. If you went in this process, would they still be taped right now? Yeah, they would still be taped now. I would leave the tape on until I got all my finish work done and then take that tape way, off. if you get any dye yeah. on your on your table where you're working at, and it, then it gets all over the back of it. Right, right. And like when you're doing your edges, you're going to get some on the back. If you if you notice here, where I got that on the back, but the front looks good. Yeah, but <laughs> if you keep it taped up, yeah, then you you'll have less leaching onto the back of it. Yeah, and after you get done with all of your finish work and everything's dry, then take the tape off and you'll have a nice, nice clean back. Look how it's dying that cup. Oh yeah, the dye's running up the cup, and you can see it on the outside too. Wonder you got anything else to do over there? Nope, that's about it. I have nothing else to do after this. After this antique sets up and gets good and dry, I will go over it with another coat of finish. I'll probably use a spray on like the Masters for the final coat. Because if you use a wipe on, and we've said this several times, if you use a, a wipe on finish, it's going to wash some of your antique back off. No muss, no fuss. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But anyway, that's all I've got. Well, what that's all that I got. Um, I got live shopping to take care of. I'm trying to find out uh, just all sorts of things, Denny. I'm just trying to do. Let's let's get all of these. Get all of our mess all off of the them, table. All, all of them all together here, where they can see the finished product oh, okay. on all of them. Oh, I'll have to zoom the camera out a little bit. Yeah. Well, maybe I can go like this. So we got Denny's Not So Secret Way. My Not So Secret, yes. Uh, Angela's Paint and Dye. And, and Antique. I think I used Antique Paste on all of them. Oh, okay. 
um, Fenichi. Fen- no, no, no. This was this was um, Feebings. Yes, this was Feebings. Feebings, and then this was Fenichi. Yeah, Fenichi does. Yeah, you can spray an uh, airbrush finish on. Yeah, sure, airbrush you, a finish. You can do anything you want to, you guys. These are just this is just one thing that we did. We tried to do several different things for you, but yeah, you know what happens if you try something out and it doesn't work. Don't do it that way again. Yeah. And you should probably, just like they tell you when you're painting new colors on the wall, paint in an inconspicuous area. Yeah. So do it on an inconspicuous piece or do a sample piece and then try a new finishing technique. And if it doesn't work, probably don't use it on a finished product yeah. that you have all tooled out. Well, you know, that's the only way. That's called the school of hard knocks if you make a mistake. Yeah. You know, I mean, the mistakes you make are probably the best lessons that you have because you will you will say, oh, I remember doing that. I don't want to do that again. Look what it did to that other project. Definitely the the most memorable, I would bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember those lessons well yeah. better than... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to make a mistake on purpose, but you're going to. I mean, no matter what you do, who you are... You, you know, what do they say? Leonardo da Vinci, it probably wasn't his first project when he did the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> oh, you don't think so? No, you think he had tested wasn't. some other, yeah, some other he techniques? He probably made a few mistakes here. And you know, and I bet you one of Van Gogh, you know, he cut his <laughs> ear off. Oh, yeah, just trying to spite his face. <laughs> yeah. He was all torn up about a project he had probably just got <laughs> done. Some say it might have been a girl. Some say it might have been an art project. I yeah, don't know. Uh, Who yeah. knows? <laughs> I have Molly wants to see those pallets of rocks. Well, they're probably Soon. on a truck Soon. on their way here. I would say you will get to video them. The pallets. Nah. That's nah. boring. That's boring. Okay. Well, you can take a quick <laughs> shot of it. Oh, okay. How's that? All right. Just reach my camera out the door and just yeah. take a snap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> there, there's a picture <laughs> of the rocks. Well, what else? You want to you do anything else? You're done. I think I'm done. I All right, it's going to be an early lunch day today, folks. Yeah, and next Wednesday, Liz will be here, supposedly. Yeah. And is that when we're going to start our little beehive deal? Well, I think, or, she, I think she wanted to. Okay. But sh- she wasn't here, and plans had to change. Oh, they have changed? Yeah. What are we doing? We're going, I think next week we're doing the messenger bag. Oh, yes, Yes. Remember, because we had told people that we had had a messenger bag video, okay. mistakenly. Not we as in me and you. We as in SLC, somebody here. But I will claim them all today. They told them that, so we're going to go ahead and get a messenger bag taken care of, and then we'll probably have to... Um, I think we're going to make a messenger bag 2.0. So we're going to make the one that we have, the pattern we already have, and then show the updates that we're going to do to the pattern, and then oh, we'll start okay. selling the 2.0 pattern. Because the other one is... It's quite old. So, anything else you'd like to say before we go? I just go back to the overhead. Go back yeah. to the overhead. Show the before and after antique. Quite a difference. There you go. Quite a difference. Yeah, these ones, these little spots that you did dye, they're a little bit darker. But I don't think they're going to be any darker once you get the antique paste oh, no, on them. They, yeah, anyway. they will lighten up quite a bit once everything sets up and cures all right well if you want to if you want to see more of us if you just can't get enough i just can't get enough we're going to be on twitch for a little while longer i got to put some orders together uh denny's going to go meet the little lady for early lunch i bet you're going to let her know you're coming uh, home early no no not my watch stopped i have no idea what time it is yeah it's 11 35 okay oh yes we have technology we do have technology <laughs> <laughs> uh denny's chest holster Dean, you, oh, you yeah. have the chip. Oh no, we, that the, was a that yeah. was a side. Yeah, we'll do one one of these days. We, you know, we don't have a pattern for it, do we? No, I haven't made a pattern for it. So I can't do a video on it because Denny don't have a pattern for it. We will though. Are we going to make a pattern live? Uh, that's a no. I don't know. All right, see you guys later. Have a great weekend. Thanks Bye. for everything. Bye.